Today I'm working with On One Photo Raw 2022. I'm doing a full edit of a pink carnation flower. I'll be featuring the perfect eraser and the retouch brush. Again, this is a full edit. Stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I was out this morning taking some flower shots and I have this pink carnation I thought was kind of interesting and I thought I would do a full edit for you today. By the way, On One Photo Raw 2022 is on sale right now. There's a new update coming out very soon in June. It'll be 2022.5. You can click on my affiliate link in the description below. It'll take you to the sale. After the sale is up, you can use my promo code David Kelly and get 20% off the software. So if you miss the sale, if you're a day or so late, you can still use my promo code David Kelly. Now that doesn't work during the sale, but after the sale, it will, it will give you 20% off. The sale ends May 31st, so that'll be tomorrow, but you can still use my promo code after that if you miss the sale and get 20% off, and that's David Kelly. I make a small commission when you click on my affiliate link and it helps me to keep these tutorials coming your way. So I greatly appreciate that. And now let's jump right into this edit. The first thing I like to do is come down to the noise and sharpening. I'm just going to click on that and I'm going to run no noise. No noise is exceptional software. It totally eliminates noise and it does a really good job. What I think I'm going to do here is enhance the detail a little bit more in this flower just a little wee bit, just to get it a little bit crisper, for lack of a better title. And I think that looks really good. As far as the sharpening at 20%, I'm going to just leave it right where it is. And then you must click apply to accept that. Now, the second thing I like to do is come to lens corrections. And right now you'll notice it says, this is on auto. I have a Canon. This is a Canon uh, 40D. It's an older Canon camera, which I really enjoy. But I have a 60 millimeter macro lens that I like to use, which is what I use to shoot this flower today. And you'll notice it says no match. Well, you know, On One is newer software. They're not catering, I guess, to some of the older lenses. Even if I come here and click right here for lens, you won't even find that 60 millimeter Canon lens in this whole list. So I'm just going to forgo that for right now. And as far as manual adjustments, I'm not going to mess with it because I think it really looks good. And in terms of uh, chromatic aberrations, there's no chromatic aberrations here whatsoever. So I'm not going to worry about that. So I'm not going to do any lens corrections. Imagine that. So next, I'll come up to tone and color, and this is where all the raw development takes place here. Now, notice here, you have some interesting buttons here. You have manual, where you can manually adjust anything here. You have AI match. Now, AI match, it matches the, uh, the image you see on your camera at the time that you take the image. Now, I shot this image slightly underexposed, so if I click on AI match, that's the way it looked in my camera, which I liked it. It looked pretty good. But then we also have AI auto, and that is using artificial intelligence to come up with what On One feels is a good exposure for us. And I don't like this. Generally, I do like this, but I don't like it here. So I'm going back to AI match, and then I'll do a little bit of tweaking from here. But you have all these different options, which is really nice. By the way, you also have this auto, adjust the auto tone amount. And watch these sliders when I pull it back. It's not like an opacity slider. It's actually adjusting all the sliders. Isn't that cool? So if you want to ease back on that adjustment, it's going to do a really nice job. And I might just pull that back just a little bit somewhere around there. And now I may just lighten up the exposure just slightly. And I mean slightly. I'm going to pull the highlights back just a little bit just to tame those highlights I might open up the mid-tone, yeah, mid-tone just a tiny little bit here. I like the shadows being dark, so I'm going to keep that where it is. As far as whites are concerned, I may just pull those back a little bit. Because I don't want the whites getting too overdone. It, because your eye tends to go towards all the light areas. So I don't want these outer petals to be too light. I'll be working with some local adjustments to tone those down a little bit as well. I may just pull the highlights back just a little bit more. And then I think as far as the uh, temperature and tint looks really good. This camera does a really good job with auto white balance. So I'm going to leave that the way it is. And I might give it a little bit more vibrance. Not too much. I don't want to go overboard here. 
but just the little wee bit, I think that's good. And I think the saturation looks pretty good right where it is. I might just pull it back just a little tiny bit, like to a two. And I think that looks good. And by the way, if you uh, type your backslash key, you can see like the before and the after. And I think we're looking good so far. I'm going to crop this image a little bit, but there's some things I don't like. Like, I don't like this bud here. I hate this flower over here. You got to admit that's ugly, right? I don't like this light area up in here. So I'm going to do a few things here. And as I said at the beginning, I'm featuring the, the perfect eraser and the retouch brush definitely to get rid of this bud. This will be cropped out over here. I'm also going to take care of some blemishes. Now, I'm really into flower photography, and I hate blemishes on my flowers. I like perfect flowers, so I'm going to clean those up. I'm going to show you how I do that. And the perfect eraser, don't you really love that name, perfect eraser? It does a really good job. There's different uh, retouch brushes in here, but I played with them all, but I came to really love the perfect eraser and the retouch brush. That's all I used on this. I'll start out with the perfect eraser. So come up and click on retouch. And you'll notice in here you have four different tools. You have the first tool here, which is the healing brush. And then you have the perfect eraser. And I love how you get these little descriptions. And then you have the retouch brush. I know it's for faces, but I'm going to use it on this flower, the face of the flower, and a clone stamp tool. So really nice tool. So let's start out with the perfect eraser. I'll use my right bracket key to make that a lot bigger. I'm just holding it down, tapping it a few times. That's about as large as it will get right there. And what I'll do is just come here and let's just get crazy here. Can we get crazy? Sometimes you got to go a little crazy and let's give it a second to see what it does. And look at that, it cleans it right up. Now there may be a few little areas here that I may want to touch up, but that's when I'll go to this other tool, which is the retouch brush. And let's make it larger. I'm going to use my right bracket key to make it larger. And then you can adjust its feather. Right now it's at 50% and the opacity, which is at 100%. And let me just paint over this area right here and just clean that area up and clean that area up. I find out... I find that if you use these two brushes in conjunction with each other, you're going to get some really nice results. Now, let me go back to the uh, perfect eraser, and I'm going to make it smaller by using my left bracket key now. And you see this little blemish over here. I'm going to see if I can just come over here, clean this up. I'm, I'm not going to go crazy all at once. I'm just going to go in little areas. Now I'm going to go crazy and see what it does. Give it a second. And it did a really nice job there. In this little area here, I think I may want to fix this. Clean it up. Okay, and this little thing right here. And I find you can even make it smaller and you can get rid of these little blemishes like this. Just give it a little tap and it'll go away. Here's a little blemish over here that I want to get rid of. Here's one over here. Now I can hear the fans whirling up in my uh, iMac because I guess this is using a lot of processing power here. Is there anything else I missed here? Hey, let me know if I missed the blemish. Hey, there's one right here I want to get rid of. See this? Let me zoom into this area right here. And let's try this perfect eraser on here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller with my left bracket key. And I'm just going to paint over here and see if I can get rid of that. Yeah, that does a really nice job. Now, let me go to my retouch brush. Now, it's way too big. I'm using my left bracket key. And let me just clean up this little area right here. But you see how those two tools work really well together? And that's good. Now, let me go ahead and zoom back out. All right, I'm thinking it's looking good. Let me... Uh, do the left bracket key. Here's the before and here's the after. Now I find when you use your left bracket key to see the before and after, the retouch stuff does not show up again. You know, the blemishes don't reappear. That's just the way the software works, I guess. One other thing I see is this little piece of a petal sticking out here. I don't like that. So in my world, it's got to go away. All right, so I'm going to grab the perfect eraser and see what kind of a job it can do. I'll make it a little bit larger this time. And I'm just going to come in here and come around. Let me see if I can fix this. Eh, look at that. Perfect. Perfect eraser. Let me go ahead and zoom back out. I'm just using my trackpad. I'm just doing a pinch to zoom type thing in my trackpad. There's different ways of zooming. Like there's 
this down here you can zoom in and out then you can also get your view tool and just give it a click and it'll go back to fit to screen and now that that's all done i think i'm ready for a crop i think there's just too much on the left and right here so let's go to the crop tool i'm just going to be in a free form crop I'm going to take the left side and bring it in to right about here. I'm going to take the right side in. Now, I could do like a square crop, but it, it will be too tight on the edges here. So I like the top here and the sides. I may just bring the bottom up just a wee tiny bit like that and click apply. And I think that's a pretty nice crop for this image. And by the way, please leave comments and questions. I'd really love to hear from you. I'm just looking at the image. I think I have a little too much space here on the right. So let me go back to the crop tool. And that's an easy fix. We can just come back in here. Everything's non-destructive here in the world of On One. And I think right there, and I'll go ahead and click apply. And now we can move on. There are two things I want to accomplish with local adjustments. One is to reduce some of the highlights on these outer petals here and then this green area here is a little too bright i want to darken that up a little bit so let me go ahead and click on local and when you click on local you'll notice you have a black hide all layer mask meaning you don't see the effect right now it's in an exposure darken mode where the exposure is darkened down i don't want to mess with the exposure i'm going to double click on exposure to reset that back and i'm going to pull my highlights back to maybe somewhere right around here i'll make my local brush a little bit smaller by tapping on the left bracket key a few times and i'm just going to go and paint right across here just to tone that down a little bit right there maybe here over in this petal a little bit bring that down a little bit maybe over here and definitely this pedal over in here i want to bring down the highlights a little bit just to take the emphasis off those and i like that i'm going to get this another time so let me go ahead and grab another local adjustment it always defaults in this darken mode here with the exposure so i'm going to double tap that and let's pull my highlights back again i'm going to try that right there yeah, and just tone that back a little bit more. And then I could come here and readjust that and just blend it in to where I think it looks good. And I think right there looks good. Next, I want to tackle this area here. So let's grab one more local adjustment. Just click on Add Adjustment. This time, I'm going to use the Darken. I'm going to get a nice big brush. I'm going to use my right bracket key. Nice soft edge on there. Now, that's, that's probably too dark, maybe. But maybe not. Let me try that. Okay, so let's take this exposure and not make it quite as dark. Something like that. I think that looks good. And then we can see the before and after. See the blue circle here? Click this. There's the before and there's the after. Now I got into the flower a little bit here. And that doesn't look bad, but I can come and paint that out by clicking on Paint Out. Make my brush smaller. Again, it's got a nice soft edge, so I can just come here and make sure I don't have that. By the way, you can hold your Option or Alt key down and go between painting in and painting out. In other words, right now it's on paint out. If I hold the Option key down, you gotta keep holding it, and then when you paint, I'm not actually painting right now, and then it would be painting in. So that's a little tip for you. I'm almost done, I just have a couple things to do, and I'm gonna go to Effects now. And I'm going to go to Add Filter, and I'm going to go to Dynamic Contrast, because what I want to do is just pop up some detail in the center right here. I'm going to use this Soft Preset, and I think that's going to be good. Now, what I want to do is hide that. So click the Layer Mask, and click Invert. That hides everything. And then I'm going to come, and I'm in the Mask tool by default here. So we're going to come up here and get this Masking Bug. Don't you love that name, Masking Bug? And what I want to use is a vignette. Now, there's a drop down here for presets. And you have all kind of different tools in here, like linear gradients and so on and so forth. I'm going to use the vignette. Okay, and so I'm just going to click and drag right here. And I got that circle. Now, I can take this and move this in like so, because I'm only interested in the center area here. I'm going to just adjust it so it's only getting the center of the flower because this delicate stuff outside that's slightly out of focus i don't want to mess with that and then i can bring the feathering in a decent amount maybe it's somewhere right around in there now i'm doing the opposite of what i want as you can see i'm taking the effect off the center i don't want that i want the effect on the center so i just click invert and now you see now i have it and then I could come in here and make some readjustments here, or I could just take the opacity 
and just pull it back. It's a little bit too strong. I'm going to pull it back to around there. Now let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. But you see how that just pops it a little bit? And the other thing I want to do is inside of this tool, we also have some other adjustments here, like we have um, highlights and shadows, and we have whites and blacks, and we have vibrance. I'm just going to bring the vibrance up on that center part of the flower. Isn't that cool? Just a little bit, not too much, just to bring some emphasis there, because I want my viewer to go right into the center of that flower. I might even tone the highlights back just a tiny little bit, maybe back to right about there. Now, let me hit my backslash key. Here's my before and here's my after. So I really like that. Again, here is the before, and here's the after. The last thing I want to do is add a vignette. So let me come back here to add filter, and we're going to find vignette right here. By the way, you can type, if you're looking for a certain uh, filter, you could type like color or detail or vignette, and it'll take you to the different filters that deal with that. So let me click on vignette. And I'm going to use one that a lot of people that use on one software love, and that's Big Softy. And it is a good one. I'm going to click on Big Softy, and that's way too dark, right? So I'm going to take this opacity and drag it the whole way off. And just I just want to add a little tiny touch of it, just like that. Here's the before, and here's the after. Now, what I think I'll finally do is go back to develop. And what I might do at the end here is decide, do I want to lighten this up a little bit? I think I may want to lighten the midtones up slightly. So I'm going to go to midtones and just give the midtones a little bit of a bump. Now here's my overall before and here is my after. And just like that, I'm done. And I love this flower image. One thing I really love in this develop module is midtones. You know, you don't have that in Lightroom. You just have exposure. But I think that midtones is a really valuable adjustment to have. Let me know what you think about in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Do you like that midtone slider? And as I said, I'm done, at least for now. I could always come back and revisit this. So I'm just going to click on done. And that will go ahead and save it out. And there it is. And you can see the other adjustments I made. I made virtual copies. You can do virtual copies here in On One as I was uh, working out the details for this tutorial. Okay. And I have a bunch of other flower images that I shot this morning too. So maybe I'll be working on these in the future. So I love flower photography. Well, there you go, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. This was On One Photo Raw. The Pink Carnation was the star of the show today. It was a full edit featuring the Perfect Eraser and the Retouch Brush. Really great tools. I love that Perfect Eraser and the Retouch Brush as well. It's, it's also good for flowers. It's more than just uh, retouching faces, okay? So it's nice. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a new tutorial. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing. Thank you.